Okay, in the last video we looked at the basic outline of your essay when it comes into the main part. But what we're going to look at now is what do we mean by this PEE -E business. Now, a lot of the times in English or actually in your education, you'll find technical terms for things you normally do. So for example, if I said to you something like, um, have you had breakfast this morning? That's obviously very simple, very easy to follow. If I say, did you have your nutrition intake it means the same thing, but it's just not a way you're used to being presented it. PE is actually very simple and very similar. So, for example, if I take a very simple statement, um, I don't like Mark. He called you an idiot. I don't want to hang around with him. He always makes fun of people. So we have a very simple, believe it or not, PEE point. I've made a point in saying I don't like Mark. I've supported it by the fact that he's called you an idiot, and that's actually my quotation because I'm actually quoting something that um, that he that Mark has said. And I don't want to hang out with him anymore. He's always making fun of people. So I've explained my point and my evidence why they're linked and why I'm taking a subsequent course of action. So it's not actually that difficult or that bizarre. How it's presented sometimes is what students don't do a lot of is they think that the um, the explanation is just a little add-on, but the explanation is where you actually get the most marks. Now, in the explanation, you're going to talk about a range of things, or you have the opportunity to talk about a range of things. So let's look at some of the things that we could actually talk about, and then we'll link it into examples from our previous essay openings for Inspector Calls and for Of Mice and Men. So first of all, if I make my point, I want to just be clear. And I need to make sure that I've had some connecting opening. So I might want to say another, also, later on. This is a simple paragraph opening variation that's going to get me marks. Now, if I'm talking about the opposite of the previous paragraph that I wrote, I can just put however, yet, on the other hand. And these are going to be my negative connectives, which means I'm changing the topic sentence. And again, just starting a paragraph with these shows par paragraph control. Very easy and simple, and I'm sure, again, a look on our website, wcsenglish.com, you'll find a range of those connectives that, that you can use. The actual areas that you want to talk about in the evidence is just the quotation of the character or writer. Now, those areas will be picked out either with speech marks, if the character's speaking, or with quotation marks, if it's actually the writer's text. So be careful, you're not going to lose any marks for it, but just more technically accurate if you quote in the way that you should quote. Now that's your P and your E covered. Again, they're very, very simple, and again, we'll go through examples in a second. The EX explaining your point is where you fully develop things. Now, a very, this is not how the examiners actually look at it, but it's just kind of a level of understanding that you can memorize and then hopefully use. If you go with a D, your explanation will simply explain how evidence and point are linked. If you're looking for a C, then you'll do that, so that's a ditto marks, so means you're going to do what's above, and you're also going to analyze specific words. Now, this could be in the form of literary techniques used, it could be in terms of punctuation used, or it could be in terms of specific words. So, for example, I might say the alliteration here makes the line more memorable. The use of the exclamation mark really emphasize what he's saying to show how intense it is. The use of the specific word destroy shows how final his actions are going to be. So that's just examples, and like I say, we'll bring it in together in a point later. If I want to move up then to a B and show that kind of understanding, I need to do all this, but I also want to mention I'm aware of the writer's intention. What was he trying to make us aware of with that? And also the effect on audience. How does this tie in to the audience's reaction, and what are they supposed to learn from it? Now, the writer's intention and the audience, uh, the effect on the audience are similar, yet different. The writer may intend something, but there might be multiple actions on the audience, multiple things that they will actually be thinking. So it's good here to show evaluation and understand multiple points where you can break it down. Another area that you can look up for that grade is actually talking about the social historical context. You need to be able to talk about how this was relevant at the time, why it was important to the people of that time, and what we can still learn from it in today. Okay, so basically if, for example, in races of, in, of mice and men, if you're looking at racism, you have to take into account the fact that if uh, Crooks had said anything to Curly's wife when she starts to make him feel small, he was actually in a position where she could just turn around and say to anyone that, that 
n-word tried to rape me and therefore he would be lynched without trial without justice without anything so you have to be aware of the social context of the time similarly for inspector calls for a person of lower class standing to make a claim to be in a relationship with a higher class person would obviously instantly they'd be thought of as chatting rubbish and everything they'd be saying would be almost inadmissible in any evidence straight away the system was prejudiced against them now to look to get an A, you will again do all of the above and you will also add, compare, you will compare if you can to other lits, okay? So you might to look at Lenny to Mary Shelley's creature in Frankenstein and how actually they're the kind of similar creatures destined for doom. That might be one way of doing it. Another thing that you actually want to do is actually make cyclical references something might happen at the beginning of the book that you could foresee towards the end so for example in of mice and men we have a cyclical situation where George mentioning the brush where Lenny should hide out is actually comes back at the end and that is where he goes and so we've got this whole idea that they've come all the way back to the end and nothing's changed however whatever they've done it was all doomed to fail from the start because they've ended up in the same situation so that's the kind of grade boundaries that you actually want to look at to hit now this is as I guess said again before it's not a hard and fast rule if you write all this it depends as well on how well you write etc but if you get into the practice of analyzing each um, PEE point using these as a rule you're going to start developing your writing and then you'll pick exactly which ones would be best to use with which quotes and then in the next video we'll go into some examples